goldfinches. Oh my god. I love them. Sweet. So I'm out here walking the sports complex and it's just delightful. Bird song and green and all these flowers like I'm currently trying to figure out how to get in there so I can take pictures <laughs> yeah bingo I'm going in oh my goodness happy day it's good stuff right here so I'm having the time of my life right now, but uh, if I get a tick on the dog, I'm going to have a lot of explaining to do. Oh, wow. Look at that. bird. Dang. We're looking good. <sighs> Frustrations. Sorry to interrupt your breakfast. I found the high school strawberry patch. Oh, I hope I just didn't get my feet wet. Pretty, pretty look. I mean, that is tempting right there. Yes. I'm gonna be good. Resist temptation. Isn't that sweet? We got us another field of wildflowers. Those yellow ones are buttercups. And what we got over here? Flea, no, it's not flea bane. I don't know what that is. Look at all that white stuff. Isn't that pretty? Gorgeous. There's some flea bane for you. And look down here. No ticks, but I got some thorns. No pain, no gain, right? And some hitchhikers too. Hopping. Seriously, though, what an absolute stunning location for a baseball field. Beautiful. Oh, look, there's a hell no right there. Big hell no. You reckon that's a mockingbird? Okay, I was mistaken. This is the baseball diamond. The other was the softball field. But honestly, I think the softball girls have a better view. This is still gorgeous though. I believe that might be a cottonwood, but don't quote me on it. And what are these? Starlings, maybe? They're too far away. Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books. Happy Friday. I just filmed my Friday reads, changed into my pajamas, and I'm going to start a new vlog. 
The Genius of Birds by Jennifer Ackerman. So this is the book naturalist pick for April. Um, a lot of people have read this on Booktube. Great reviews, and I'm super excited to dive in. Let's do this thing. Morning world. Hello, so what can I say? What can I say? I am a vlogging fail thus far this weekend. I was supposed to finish this book today and I've read two pages, but in other news, my watch later list is at zero. So <laughs> that's something, right? Um, there are pictures, so that's tweet. And I felt seen on the first page. So did you know there's a kind of bird that creates colorful designs out of berry? No, that's not the right part, sorry. Um, do, 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 do. Another kind of bird that hides up to 33,000 seeds scattered over dozens of square miles and remembers where it put them months later. So these birds are a lot smarter than I am because I can't even remember what I was trying to do when I walked from one room to the next. So anyway, I am going to the park with my friend Tonya and so hopefully we'll see some nice birdies for you. Definitely wildflowers. And then, you know, it's gonna be lunchtime. And I have so much yard work to do and the house is a wreck. So who knows? Who knows how the reading will go, but it's gonna be a fun weekend, except for the housework. Yeah, catch you later. You're not gonna like what I'm about to do. It's gonna make you nervous. <laughs> I have never in my life really seen this many wild columbines. Like, I don't think I've These ever like seen. A red, even. I don't think I've ever seen this many <laughs> cultivated columbines. To be honest, wow. Oh my goodness, this is stunning. All these little violet wood swirls. Pretty, pretty. These little things fascinate me. It's like a, I think they called it spurge or something, woodland spurge or? It's like walking through a little fairy woodland. The tiny little daisies. <laughs> He's 
hiding. She, she's hiding. So on her orange paws, or they're not paws, but like, can you see how they're orange on the end? Is that like all the pollen or the nectar that she's collected? Yeah, those are little buckets. Like in her, because the other one had the little, same thing. Gorgeous. Look at all these shooting stars. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Butterfly. Flowers. Oh. Hey, so. I'm glad I'm not distracted by the weeds outside the window anymore. I, um, I've been listening to the genius of birds on audiobook. I decided, you know, a great way to get the artwork done and also get the reading done. And it's been great. It's been great. So I've listened to the first chapter or so of this and I am loving it. It is so charming. And also so scientific and thought-provoking oh it's great um so I'm liking the in the first chapter the linking of bird intelligence and, and human intelligence like the comparison between those and kind of exploring you know myself as a human being and the world at large and thinking about how you know, humans like to think that we're on top, but, you know. <laughs> um, and the idea of anthropomorphization, anthropomorphization, something like that. In science, how that's a big no-no, but also if you don't at least briefly think about human intelligence, in tandem with animal intelligence, you kind of limit your investigations and, and the way you can think about things. Uh, it's also fascinating. And it's, you know, pairing well with the diversity of life that I've also been reading. Uh, I've been buddy reading this with Heidi. And we were talking about, you know, just biology as a science. And I was reflecting on how it's taught in the school system and it, so much focus is on microbiology and why is that when ecology is so fascinating and engaging for children and students um, and she was mentioning you know in her field you know science out in the field work as well that just in general lab work is easier to control and get done um, scientific investigations out in the field are messy and just difficult to control and know if your results are really actually what you were testing. So this book is like shedding light on a lot of that as well. Um, with these scientists that are doing experiments with birds out in the field and how they think up these experimental designs. It's just it's just fascinating. I'm, I'm really loving it. Um, so now I think I better go mow and listen to some more. Hmm. Huh. Guess I'll do this one this morning. I'll put dandelions in there. Those little finches. They might have built a little nest on top of that nest. Oh yeah, they added their own little touch. Yeah. Guess it wasn't up to their liking. They remodeled. Like bring it all. 
got back from Home Depot. I had to get some more mulch and etc. Um, true story, the aisle where the garbage cans were located, I needed a new garbage can. It was cordoned off danger zone and they had like little workers guarding it, but they let you go in and out at your own risk. Like if you ask permission, I don't know what it was about, but I think it was like because there were all these birds like they didn't want people to get pooped on or something <laughs> I don't know there were just tons of little birdies just going back and forth over there so anyway fun time so I'm about to go do yard work I wanted to check in with my reading so I've read through chapter 3 100 pages of the genius of birds by Jennifer Ackerman and it is so engrossing um, this last chapter was about the New Caledonian crows, which are the most um, cognitively developed, we can't say smart <laughs> or intelligent, the most cognitively developed uh, of the bird species. And their tool usage rivals that of primates. It's really fascinating, um, the discussions here and the experiments that are being designed to test their cognitive abilities and the comparisons um, between birds and primates and humans and you know how these kind of studies um, can tell us more about ourselves. I mean, it's just all really fascinating the way it's all linked together and yeah, yeah, and I wanted to suggest if you are into birds and these ideas um, and field studies and amateur naturalists and scientists, uh, this is a book that Britta gave me um, a couple years ago, Bird Cottage by Eva Meiser. And this was, um, it's a novel, but it's a novelized account of, um, an actual naturalist uh, over in Europe somewhere, but she actually left her job and moved to the country back where she grew up, I believe, um, and just let the birds live with her. Like she opened her home, the windows, and so she could study the birds in their most natural state. It was fascinating. And so this um, pairs nicely with, you know, the birds and the study of birds in the field and the complications inherent in experimenting with um, animals and getting them to behave naturally um, when you're doing unnatural things. So yeah, really cool. Uh, great books. And I'm back to work. You funny girl, Chicky. Chicky, Chicky. <laughs> you go take naps up there? It's a good idea. So, I got a little bit more done. You enjoy my stripes and the dove song. And look at this. The clematis is blooming. Oh dear. Do you see that? That's got to go back outside. There's the dove. Sweet. Oh, that's not sweet. <laughs> oh, I don't think she's interested. <laughs> the 
drama. <laughs> nope. You want to try one more time? Oh! Bring it in the air. Hey, so I just got home from work and I wanna quickly wrap up this vlog. Um, before I forget, I wanted to mention that this month uh, is an author spotlight. So not just The Genius of Birds, but any books by Jennifer Ackerman. So Heidi from My Reading Life, um, had already read The Genius of Birds. So she read Birds by the Shore and really enjoyed it as well. And she has an excellent uh, review of that as well as spotlight on Jennifer Ackerman herself. So be sure and check out Heidi's channel and that video, I will link it below. Um, just a couple more things about this book. I really loved it. This was fabulous. Jennifer Ackerman is a, just an incredible nature writer, able to bring the science in and just all of these delightful anecdotal examples, but that really shed light on the different intelligences of birds. It was just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, I found some funny bits. I don't know that she deliberately intended them to be funny, but I think she knew that they were a little funny if, for people like me. <laughs> for example, um, monogamous birds that we've traditionally thought of as being monogamous, um, they get around a little more than we thought they did. Um, and <laughs> This, you know, getting around makes the females more intelligent. And the um, molding the male of the species to be more monogamous uh, makes him more intelligent. <laughs> I just, I found that amusing, okay? And then the other thing that I thought was really brilliant about this book, just all the way through, is this idea that birds and not just birds you know other creatures um have specialities and varying uh degrees of intelligence and are sentient beings and i think the the early naturalists kind of discounted that idea um, and put you know human beings on such a high pedestal and you know, so so far above the rest of the animal kingdom that th there just wasn't any comparison. And I think that inhibited scientific study. And now that we've gotten past that and realized that they're sentient beings in their own right and, you know, have varying intelligences in so many different areas to explore, it's just opened up our scientific investigation and the things that we can learn. I like that she mentioned you know just over and over and over how these investigations into the bird world how they relate to human beings and how we're learning about ourselves through investigating birds just really fascinating fascinating information and also in turn um you know this idea that we shouldn't put ourselves <laughs> above others at all like I just couldn't help thinking about the eugenics that I just read about in, um, and I've read about it before, but it was kind of in the forefront of my mind, mentioned a couple times in like how the word is passed and Robert E. Lee and me that I read recently. Um, yeah, that's not good. That's not good. You know, just be open-minded people, be open-minded. So this is a great, great book. I uh, highly enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye.